Mon nom est Brigitte Bélanger-Warner, je suis l'attachée de presse du spectacle haut du Cirque du Soleil à Las Vegas. Bienvenue au Cirque du Soleil! La Liberté started as a street performer with the dream to take his group of jugglers, fire eaters, stilt walkers, and clowns on a world tour to have fun and entertain people. He had no idea that he was embarking on a journey that would revive the traditional circus and reinvent live entertainment, making him one of the most successful people in international business. Today, Cirque du Soleil has over nine shows playing worldwide, including O, which is permanently staged at the Bellagio in Las Vegas and takes place in and above a 1.5 million gallon water tank. Cirque du Soleil began really in 1984 when a troupe of circus performers and street performers came together for the 450th anniversary of Jacques Cartier's visit to the Americas. And then they quickly realized that if they wanted to perform all around the year, that they needed to go where there was a warmer climate because performing under a tent in Canada <laughs> could get pretty chilly in some winter months. So they decided to go to Los Angeles and in 1987, they were given the opportunity to do the opening show at the Los Angeles Arts Festival. Guy hit the road around the same time that businesses worldwide were moving toward globalization, taking regional businesses into international markets. With the Cold War over and trade barriers dropping all over the world for the first time in history, companies like Cirque found it much easier to penetrate new markets. There were still challenges, of course, as Guy found out when he first ventured into the U.S. market. Uh, if they would have failed in uh, Los Angeles, there was not enough money to put gas in the trucks to bring, you know, the equipment back home. Uh, fortunately, that did not happen. The show was ex extremely successful. It was a, a press and public success immediately. And uh, then quickly the uh, company evolved some more. We created new shows, new productions, and uh, we have many, many more projects to come. In one sense, Cirque faces much greater challenges than most global companies. First, it must literally search the globe for specific talents. A good example of that is Mongolia. Uh, the little kids, as you know, in Canada, little kids start to play hockey when they're very little. In Mongolia, little kids learn to, uh, they learn contortion. So we know for sure that if we want to find great contortionists, we go to Mongolia. If we think about our O show that is so unique because of the 1.5 million gallons of water on the stage, uh, we have to find um, people that are also, in some cases, uh, expert scuba divers. So a lot of those come from Hawaii for some reason. Not surprisingly, Cirque also looks to the Olympics to find talent. This can be a saving grace for events such as synchronized swimming and gymnastics that, unlike basketball and soccer, don't have professional leagues. It's interesting for the, uh, the athletes to be able to continue to do what they love to do and what they've trained all, all their life to do instead of going back and doing a regular job after their competition career is over. At the same time, Cirque Scouts take an ethical approach, realizing that in many cases, foreign governments have spent significant money and time training these athletes. We do not approach an athlete until we know for sure that this is their last Olympics and they're done with competition. Uh, it's an ethic that we really want to respect. In addition, depending on both an athlete's culture and their particular sporting event, they may have athletic ability, but not theatrical flair. It is absolutely important that they be open. Uh, one of the things that we ask them to do in auditions is we ask an athlete to, for example, climb a rope, and then once they're up there, we ask them to sing a song. And they're totally caught off guard by that, and the way that they will react and what they will do will tell us how open an individual is to really give a lot of what he has inside. Nobody wants to pay you know, money to buy a ticket necessarily to go, you know, see a triple summer, somersault. You can see that on TV. They, they want to feel something. They want to be touched. Secondly, Cirque du Soleil faces greater challenges because most global companies don't have to worry about the welfare of their employees during non-work hours. For Cirque traveling shows, however, employee welfare is a 24-hour-a-day concern. 
That includes everything from the type of food they serve to dealing with language barriers, housing, and even homesickness. Our performers are really the reason why we're, we're all here, part of this company, and we need to take care of them, and Sol du Soleil is really, really careful in making sure that the performers have everything that they need to be able to be happy and productive. Of course, Sol du Soleil is not a life that is for everybody, and it is true that some performers have left because they were not happy being so far away from home. To help them feel more comfortable, Cirque does its best to create a family atmosphere. We really, truly are a big family because for most of us, uh, you know, we work together, we are brought into this environment, and Cirque du Soleil makes sure that, you know, we, we bond together not only at work, but we have parties, we have trips that we can take all together. We have once a month a, a day of where we feature, for example, Russian cuisine and the Russian performers bring a dish from their country and they share that with the rest of the cast. Same thing that month after would be Australia or France or wherever. So that's one way that they get to share a little bit of their culture with, with their teammates. Although the performers are the stars of the show, there are many talented artists, designers and technicians from around the world that work behind the curtains, coming up with solutions to Cirque's never-ending creative needs. Cirque du Soleil, of course, hires performers. We now have over 600 of them that come from all over the world. But we wouldn't be able to put on our shows without the support of wonderful technicians and support staff. For example, when we created O, uh, the conceptors wanted a piano that could be driven and that would sink through the water. And no is not a word at Cirque du Soleil, and impossible is not a word at Cirque du Soleil. So we have teams of research people who try to design and then fabricate models and then test those and we ended up with a piano in stainless steel that could be driven with the pedals and that would end up sinking through the water at the end of the show. Although Cirque shows are pretty much self-contained units when they travel, they often make use of local talent when staging permanent shows like in Las Vegas and Orlando. We, we do find locally a lot of HR people, IT, um, marketing and PR, of course. Especially, for example, in Las Vegas, we have a lot of really good technicians in Las Vegas. As you can imagine, with all the shows that are presented on the Strip and in this city, Cirque du Soleil also likes to give a chance to its employees to be transferred into different positions and different locations. Um, for example, I worked in Montreal at the headquarters for three and a half years and then was transferred to O in Las Vegas to be the publicist. The important thing for Cirque du Soleil is that when they have employees that they want to keep, they want them to be happy. So if that means transferring them elsewhere, that what makes them happy, they will definitely do their best to try and find them a position in a different market or in a different show. Of course, all of this talent doesn't come cheap. Cirque pays its people extremely well, and in many cases, much greater than they'd be able to earn in their home countries. The traveling shows have their own kitchen staffs, who develop relationships with local suppliers to assure the freshest, healthiest meals for Cirque performers. Cirque even proudly subjects their traveling kitchens to local health and cleanliness standards. In this way, Cirque performers not only serve the communities they visit, but they're a new market in those communities as well. It's all part of the international flavor of a Cirque show. One of the main venues in which Cirque gives back to the communities it touches is its Cirque du Monde program, which teaches circus skills to local youth challenged by poverty, drugs, and homelessness. From Colombia to Singapore to Amsterdam, Cirque has expanded the horizons of thousands of young people through its caring and generosity. It's a way of giving them confidence in themselves and finding a purpose and um, finding out that they can achieve something by working in a team, working together. And so one of the kids became part of Cirque du Soleil as well. One of the kids that was part of the Cirque du Monde was so talented and so generous that uh, he ended up being part of one of our shows. Guy La Liberté has not forgotten his own humble beginnings as a street performer. Guy La Liberté used to be at one point in his life living he was living in the street as well and and you know playing his accordion breathing fire for money 
And so we don't want to forget where we come from as a company and it's very important. So this is why we give back to the community. With Cirque du Soleil, now a premier international brand on the way to becoming a billion dollar a year business by 2007, and Guy himself financially successful beyond his wildest dreams, Cirque du Soleil has achieved everything he had hoped for. He has brought together thousands of artists, technicians and performers from around the globe, creating a show that works in any culture and thus touching the lives of millions of people through a combination of energy and creativity. Sweet, Daniel,